automation is not an IT function, it's a business imperative. Hi, I'm Eileen Kiernan, Global CEO of UM. Hi, I'm Rob Pierre, CEO of Jellyfish. Today, we're going to be discussing how automation is critical to driving actionable insights and accelerating growth. I think uh, the main reason it's so important to automate is because there are exponential number of tasks that need to be done. It's no longer where you have a 30-second slot or a 60-second slot and you can have creative around a billboard or a short radio ad. It's actually many formats across many platforms. And if you don't support human resource with automation, I don't think you would ever get close to achieving the number of tasks that are required to run a digital campaign. No, I couldn't agree more. I think we're thinking about it the same way. I kind of carve it into two buckets. There's the, the strategic side of it, which is how do we how do we mine all the potential of what's been developed over the past six or seven years and find ways through, whether it's machine learning or AI, to cut through to the critical insights because there's so much to, to wade through. One of the one of the learnings of the past five years, every every time we've built a new tool or built a new system or a capability to automate a particularly painful part of the process is without the strategy or the right underpinnings, you end up then with a ton of systems and tools that aren't necessarily speaking to one another. And then that in turn creates more layers and more complexity that drives more work. And the only way forward in that space is to find ways to to automate a whole variety of tasks. And in, in an ideal world, as we think about what automation actually is, have an infrastructure around automation that allows those pieces to connect. So it becomes kind of one sort of automated ecosystem, if you will, because the connectivity between the various systems and tasks is is as important as the automation of the individual tasks themselves. I'm not sure if you found something similar in your space. 100%. It's becoming everything is a minimal viable product. (laughs) Now, we're never going for the final um, version because it's moving so quickly. And like you say, we're moving on, platforms change, processes change. I mean, it's the, within our culture that if you do something more than three times um, within a week, then they're the things that we're targeting. And to your point, the operational side of things, it, it's become very difficult for, for talent to kind of grow in the organization if they're mired in low value tasks that are very, very heavy and very manual kind of down the chain. And we were taking a hard look and in a very microscopic way at those tasks, looking at ways to automate them, A, to control our cost base, but B, also just to make sure that from a talent perspective, we're freeing people up from some of that really low value work and allowing them to kind of engage their brains and and engage with clients in a much more strategic fashion. Because there's this misconception that automation is gonna challenge uh, people and their jobs. And uh, that's not actually the case. You're never displacing people because there's an infinite number of tasks. So what you're trying to do is look at the outcome you're after and see whether you can actually get that perfect blend of automation and technology. We've got tools that help us facilitate programmatic campaigns. And again, every time an an analyst or a uh, campaign strategist is doing a task more than three times in a day, we've got a specific engineering team that are innovating and building these tools to help facilitate those processes. And I think the talent needs are growing on both ends. There's the there's the need for even more strategic talent, you know, analysts and strategists who know how to work with data in a very sophisticated fashion. And then, of course, there's all this new labor that's come up on the other side of the spectrum. And our cost basis just doesn't support it because clients don't have the kind of funding to support incremental, you know, fee upon incremental fee. Yeah, I think... Uh, Automation is becoming more prevalent also because of AI and machine learning. And um, automation historically has been associated with media, really. I think what we've seen is that we're just augmenting our normal life, you know, our everyday, I will call it analog life. So you go to a bar and uh, historically, you would stand three people deep with cash in your hand and buy drinks. That's just, I don't think that's ever going to happen again. And so by automation, now we're using an app, we're using our phone. You're able to just uh, scan a QR code, type in what you would like. It automatically pays 
because you've got a wallet of some description. These are all things that are being automated right in front of our very eyes. And we're just taking it in our stride and it's happening day in, day out. So I think there are going to be, it's been a catalyst. And I think a lot of people aren't going to go back for, and um, we're going to embrace where automation and technology has enriched our lives. But it's, again, never going to actually replace what we do as human beings. It is just augmenting it or supporting it and helping it, making it more efficient. But I think it just allows us to do more things. So using the crude analogy of being in a bar, it means you could sit at a table a little bit longer and talk to your friends and engage in some conversation instead of missing out because it was your round and you're standing three people deep and waiting to, to um, pay for your drinks with cash. And I think that the world will get is getting a lot more nuanced. I mean, where every client and every company will go on its own journey and they won't be the same. And in fact, the competitive advantage might just be in speed, speed to insight, speed to activation, speed to execution. And when I think about what are the biggest barriers many of our clients face, it's less so in the strategic space. I think there's been a huge awakening to the importance of, of first party data, second party data, harnessing the power of that targeting, content targeting. I think that there's been less attention spent on, well, wait a second, if I can do that, can I deliver against it? And again, because it doesn't have to be extremely procedural, repeatable and predictable, that's why we're able to automate much more. And now the automation of the development and the optimization of assets and creative is becoming more prevalent. So it's what, what I think automation is, is using technology to not only allow us to, to conduct tasks in a much, much easier and faster and more consistent fashion, but it's also allowing us to do complex tasks and analysis that we haven't been able to do in the past. I think the holy grail that that we're all driving towards on the back of all this change over the past six or seven years is is the personalization of the marketing chain, right? So if we're chasing personalization, then there's a there's a number of kind of component parts of that. There's making sure that you're chasing the right person in the old way, right message, you know, right right target, right time. Um, but how you do that, to your point, Robin, in real time. It has just changed the game because it just means that the speed with which we have to be able to analyze insights and optimize against data and get back into market is nothing like we've seen in the past 10 years. One of the one of the barriers or impediments that I've seen happen in recent years, which concerns me, and I, I constantly have a flag against it in my own organization, is it, it, it can be easy to see automation as a way to drive efficiency, just to take cost out of the system, and that becomes the function of automation versus, of course, the other end of the spectrum, which is how can it drive tremendous growth and tremendous um, value on the back of the incremental work it can drive or the, or the incremental speed it can bring to a process, et cetera. Being more outcome focused is really helping us as well. Fee models are still leaning more towards the traditional media when you were using your networks or the economies of scale to add value to your clients. But it's very, very different. And I think the mix of media versus resource and technology is shifting somewhat. And uh, I don't think the industry is quite caught up with that. If you're buying hours, you're already on the back foot because you're not buying outcomes, you're buying hours and people and agencies and partners believe they're adding value by putting more hours. And all the questions are, am I getting value? Because um, are, are we seeing the the output from the team. I can't stress enough, if soon as you shift that to being outcome-based and you're not focusing on the hours that you're doing, you're more likely to be able to automate and do more for the money that's um, being offered in fees. The currency is business, the currency is money. So automation is just one way to get there. We, we very firmly are, are held accountable to and hold ourselves accountable to making sure that the the language that we use when we're thinking about things like automation translates to something that is both quantifiable and qualifiable in, in just tangible business outcomes. I think many of our clients, and I think speaking for my own business, we are emboldened to a degree by the rate of change that we're living through. And I think it's shaken up a level of courage and a level of, of recognition 
that the things that we know we need to do must be done now. So the only way forward to manage that really carefully is automation. 